This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast that takes a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we recap a huge weekend for the men's squash team that saw the Bobcats win three matches in three days. Plus, meet women's basketball junior guard Davina Kabantu, who helped the Bobcats pick up a pair of key wins last week. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The men's squash team welcomed Navy, Connecticut College, and Franklin and Marshall to town last weekend for the first three home matches of the year for the Bobcats. Bates went 3-0, led by sophomore Alex Spiro at the top of the lineup who went undefeated number one, including a 3-2 win over his opponent from Navy. The Bobcats are 4-1 on the year, and Alex Spiro is our male Bobcat of the week. Alec was unavailable to join the Bobcats this week. However, he was not the only Bates player to shine. Fellow sophomore Harris Ramley picked up a massive five-game win on Sunday against the Diplomats, and Ramley joins the Bobcast to look back on the 3-0 weekend. Well, Harris, first of all, I'm first time on the Bobcast, so tell me a little bit about your background. What made Bates the place for you when you're looking at colleges? I was applying when I was in high school. I I, uh, I got help from my squash coach in high school at Taft. Mm-hmm. Well, I went to Taft in Connecticut. So she recommended me Colby and Bates. That's my first two choices. And I chose Bates because, I don't know, I felt... I, was, I talked to the team two years ago, and they were really nice, and they were much more friendlier, and I, I saw that chemistry that was going on between the teammates... And I thought, yeah, might as well go to Bates instead of Kobe because I talked to them as well. But then, yeah, I chose Bates because why not? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. And growing up, uh, when did you start playing squash? When did you get into the sport? Um, so I, I I started playing when I was six years old. Mm-hmm. Well, my dad, um, he put me into squash because he he was trying to help um, make squash more popular in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. And then that's how I got stuck to squash since then. So your dad, what got him into squash? What made him want to promote the sport? Well, he, he never played squash, actually. Oh, interesting. He was more of a soccer player mm. and a track and field um, runner. But then he never got into squash. But he actually enjoyed watching squash. And then he wanted... So he sent all of his um, um, ch- children to for squash practice. Mm. So, but then I'm the only one who stayed until now, okay. which is kind of interesting, you know. And yeah, I still love playing the sports and having, being in this team at Bates is really amazing for me. Yeah, and we get obviously squash players at Bates from all over the world. How big is squash in Malaysia right now? Well, I would say from when I started and uh, compared to now, it's really, really big now. We have lots of a lot, um, junior players that are coming up now. And we have a few professional squash players in the PSA. So I'm I'm saying it's gone really big progress since I started playing squash. Excellent. Well, what a weekend for the men's squash team, right? 3-0 right here at home. Uh, you had some an epic match, right? A five-gamer, is that right, that you won? Take us through that one. So on Sunday, we played against FNM, mm-hmm. which they were nationally ranked pretty much higher than us. It was very intense on Sunday. Um, well, my game, it went. It was very overwhelming for me, honestly, mm. because I've been going through a lot. And since last year, every time I play f- through fifth game, I always like get unmotivated. But this time, I don't know how, but I broke. Th- I somehow broke through the barrier, and I feel like from now on, it's gonna be a lot better. Oh, that's cool! So it felt like a real breakthrough for you. Yes, definitely. It, after I won that match, it felt like. A big relief that was going through me and then yeah I, I started being emotional <laughs> yeah excellent and then obviously your teammate at the top of the lineup Alec uh, had a big week as well I mean I, I think he had an epic win against Navy the first day Navy. so take us through watching him what he was able to do well Navy big, big match for him like credits to him um, so he is really up there right now he's playing really well he's prepared for the whole season and um, f- even me, I look up to him, like how disciplined he is on court and off court. And even in academics, he's always on top of his stuff. So it's it's been really fun. And then watching him play on Friday, it was 
very I don't know how to say it, but it feels it felt like I was watching someone who I really like look up to a role model. Terrific. And then the team as a whole, I mean, 3-0, and what were some of the conversations like after you got that third victory over Franklin Marshall to complete an undefeated weekend like that? Yeah. Well, it's been it's been a long week, and it's yeah. been fun. But then we have another mo- another game tomorrow against yeah. Bowden, which we have to be prepared. We can't just let, a, let our guts down, right. honestly. Yeah. yeah, Bowden, what's that rivalry like with them, obviously? Um, well, last year they came to us to Bates, mm-hmm. and we I think we won six three. Mm-hmm. And well, this year they have few other freshman recruits who looked um, really well, and um, I'm guessing it's going to be a another war for us. Yeah, great. And then um, obviously after the Bowden match, then you will get some time to finally <laughs> relax a little bit, right? After finals are all over, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, it's going to be a long <clears throat> week next week because we have finals, and yeah. then we have. Three weeks before mm-hmm. another game in second week of January. Yeah. So we'll probably be come back, coming back the first week of January just to like start our sessions. Yeah, take us to the atmosphere of the weekend, like the fan support and everything like that. Um, last week it was um, it was a big biggest turnout for me because I'm a sophomore and I've um, sure. I haven't seen a lot of um, people coming here. Um, but um, a lot of people showed up, and it was really interesting. It was really exciting for me because I got a lot of um, help and support, and everyone was cheering for all the Bates stu- um, bait squash team, women and men. So uh, I think it was a great turnout. Excellent. Well, any other thoughts you wanted to share about the weekend we haven't got to talk about or anything? Well, we were prepared to be having a war, the, that three days of war. And um, so... It's not that we were we're not gonna let our guts down right now because it's gonna be a long season. We have that was like our uh, three, four, five games, mm-hmm. and then we're gonna have more games. We have we're gonna have NASCAR, nationals. So from now on, we're gonna. Sp- Keep pushing. Absolutely, yeah. Bates been off to a four and one start, but as you mentioned, it's a long season, and it should be fun to keep track of everything. Again, uh, Harris, thanks so much for joining the Bobcats. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. The women's squash team went one and three over the weekend, following close contests to Georgetown on Friday and Franklin and Marshall on Sunday. But in between, the Bobcats picked up their first win of the season, a six to three victory over Connecticut College. Junior Andy Martagon had an undefeated week at the number one position, winning all three of her matches. And she is our female Bobcat of the Week. Well, Andy, a uh, 3-0 week for you individually there for the women's squash team at number one, um, where you played all of last year also. But I was curious about your five-game match on Sunday. That was quite the battle. You came back from two down, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, it, was, it was a very crazy game. I started, I was very excited before the match. And, of course, when I started playing, I did not know I was going to go to a bound. That was definitely not in my plans. Um, but again, my coach and my teammates were really there for me and were like, we're ready for the five, five game. We're like, you need to bring it on. Like, you got it. Like, they did a really good job in coaching me. Um, so yeah, I always had that in mind. And like, also hearing them, like, from out to the court, like, yelling, that's very encouraging. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm curious because, I mean, you've played a lot of squash. When you're down to nothing like that, what's the... What's the conversation like between that second and third game trying to get back out there and ready? Okay, I got to win three of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when you're already too low down, you kind of think like, oh, like she's probably going to let her guard down. Like she thinks like she has it in the bag. Like, you know, like she's not going to expect this to come um, from you. So like I think the third game I won like 11-2. Like she always didn't see it coming. And I could notice that she was really tired, like just her body language, or like he would take a long time to like bounce the ball and serve. Um, so then the fifth one is really a lot of, like my coach told me, like stick to the plan, you need to do this. If you don't do this, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> and also like if you're already like coming back two, two games to two, you might as well just get it, right? Like, yeah. you're not going to get another two games to just lose a match. So I really had that in mind. Certainly, obviously, you know, you work a lot with Rye, but, um, you know, during the match, who are some of your teammates who are kind of helping you out there also? So in my court, it's always me, Asia, and Erica. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, Rye comes, like, even though he coaches, like, basically all the courts, he does really take the time and come. He knows my game pretty well, and he's a really good coach, so he knew what I wanted to do and he told me since the beginning 
Um, so just the fact that he kept repeating it and my teammates were also um, telling me the same thing really opened my ass and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a little about the first year. You mentioned her who's playing at number two this year, right? Yeah, she's a um, freshman. You, you said that. Um, Asya Patel, she's from India. Um, yeah, it's, I didn't know her before um, her coming to Bates and we've become really good friends. We always um, train together. Um, I don't see her around too much. But she's she's definitely one of my favorites in the team. <laughs> Great. And then, um, you know, what did you learn about your, you know, first real season last year, right, as a, as a sophomore, but it was really your first year um, in competitive squash. What did you learn about, you know, college squash that you're applying kind of this season? It's hard to say because, again, it, the season is, like, technically, like, kind of short. Yeah. Um, but I can definitely say from experience, like, like warm-ups, like, we always have like an hour to warm up and then your core, like you need to be there and support your team. It's like Eric and Asi are very for me. Like I also need to be there for them. Um, probably also you get to know some of your opponents and their way of like how they play. Um, Cause it's basically the same people, especially the players in my own class. Yeah. Um, and it's also really nice to be able to guide the, the underclassmen um, as I, like Asia or like all the sophomores or even your walk-ons. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I was going to ask about the walk-ons because right now the women's team, you're kind of waiting for two key players, I think, to come back uh, in January, if I'm not mistaken, right? So what's it like, though, been, you know, working with some of these less experienced players, seeing them develop uh, this fall, perhaps? Um, it's actually been really fun. I yeah. did not know any of them until mm-hmm. they joined the team. Mm-hmm. And I got to say they're, like, really broad, like, they, like, like, you know, it's, like, offer, like, different energies, and, like, they do bring something um, to the team, and I hope they stay in the team after the players come back because they – we need them. <laughs> We're still going to need them. <laughs> oh, you have a Bowden match this week, right? At, at Bowden, yeah, that's um, tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, yes. right? Yeah, so what are you looking forward to, uh, you know, playing your rivals there in Brunswick at their place? Yeah, it's actually my first time in Bowdoin. I've never been there, mm-hmm. um, but I heard some people of the team used to – play there because the courts were on their repairment or something Mm -hmm. so they know the courts um also we played boating like probably only my freshman sophomore year sorry we played them I think two or three times Mm -hmm. so I know the top street players pretty well um and yeah, we've always beat them, so we'll see how we do this time. <laughs> yeah, it should be a fun matchup. But yeah, any other thoughts you want to share about you know the season so far? I guess I'm pretty excited for NESCACs and Nationals, also because NESCACs are going to be combined. And I think for Nationals, we're going to Philly. Mm. So it's definitely going to be two exciting weekends. Um, so the, the men's team and the women's team always, I feel like we support each other pretty well. So it's definitely going to be fun to have them around and then cheer them up and they'll cheer us up <laughs> sounds good andy martin thanks so much for joining us on the podcast really appreciate it thank you so much the women's basketball team picked up a thrilling 64 61 win over hudson on tuesday and followed that up with an 86 63 win over st joseph's on thursday it was a breakout week for junior guard davina cabantu who scored a game high 13 points against the eagles and was a force to be reckoned with all over the court with five rebounds and three steals as well she followed that effort with six points and a steal against the monks well, Davina, first of all, you have quite the interesting, obviously, background before you got to Bates. Take us through kind of your journey um, from the Congo to Portland to here. So I came here in the summer of 2017. Um, I was here to play, um, uh, help an AAU team in California. So I was supposed to stay for the whole uh, the whole summer until AAU was, um, was over and then um, we're not supposed to stay here, uh, <laughs> and then while well, stuff happened, you know, Congo with a lot of insecurities and all that, all that, um, so we were kind of forced to, um, move here, because one of our cousin was, um, here in Maine, that's how we came to Maine, and we started school and all that, and we met our new family here in the Stacy families and that we've been with them since then and uh, we attended my uh, my cousin and my sister and I um, attended uh, Portland High School and that's how our journey started here and how did you start you know getting in, getting into the sport of basketball kind of when you were a, a kid growing up oh so I'm in a family of 11 kids <laughs> 
and um, seven boys and four girls, and all my brothers were athletes in soccer, basketball. And uh, I think I started playing basketball when I was around six years old, seven, um, because my brother will go practice, and then they'll just take with me uh, sometimes 30 minutes before practice, just getting some shots in, and then I'll be a rebounder. I, I think that's how I became a good rebounder, because I'll just rebound for them, and you know. And um, it was kind of hard uh, back home, because at that time, it was hard for girls to be involved in sport and stuff like that, and then parents were against that. So I was kind of in a safe place, because my brothers were there, so my mom my dad were like oh you're safe so you can go with them as long as your brothers are there you can go and that's how i kind of got into playing basketball and you said you were involved with aau how did you get involved with that uh so back home i play in um academy okay um pjb academy and we had a lot of visiting coaches from a little bit all over the world mm -hmm. from united states and europe and there was a coach um, from Chicago who came and coach, uh, coached us for a couple of months. And then he had connection with other coaches. And the, the coach here needed help with his AAU team. And that's how we got that connection coming here. And so you weren't planning initially to stay? No. Right. And no. so, I mean, that must be a crazy experience. I mean, what, what prompted you to you know, say, okay, I do need to stay here? Well, first it was uh, insecurity back home because right. um, when stuff happened and, like, um, you know, the conflict, the political conflict, when stuff like that happened, especially in my city, Goma, mm. all the borders are closed, so you can't get in or go out, so it, there was no way to go back. So that's how... Um, and my cousin who was here, he was like, yeah, I know how it is back home, so you're just going to come and stay with me. So that's how it happened. Sure. And then um, you mentioned the family you've kind of joined, basically, right? I mean, yeah. in Portland. What was that you know, transition like? Kind it, of was, it was an uh, emotional transition because yeah. um, it was hard. We were under 18. Mm -hmm. um, and then my cousin got a job in california so he had to take it you know pays well and we couldn't stay alone under 17 so the school got involved in looking for families for us so there was um this family of my teammates in high school she was she was a captain grace stacy and her parents stayed in her dad stayed in like oh we got a big house you know guest space it's not bad Ask the kids, is it okay if we add three more sisters in? They were like, yeah, let's do it. And that's how we did it. Great. And then how did Bates first get on your radar for college? So uh, it was my junior year. Um, I was looking for a couple schools. And uh, when Bates came in, I don't know what happened. I just knew it was going to be my choice because it's – well. Um, I've already been far from home once, so I was like, yeah, I just want to be close to home now. And it's kind of easy because it's just, it's just 35 minutes away from home. I can go anytime I want, so I knew it was the right fit for me. And I came for an overnight visit, came at the camp. I just felt like it was the right fit because the program was good. The team was good. The girls were amazing, and I was like, yeah, that's that's where I'm going to go. Terrific. And then, of course, I'm sure you, I mean, no one was expecting a global pandemic to strike, obviously. That, I'm sure, th threw a wrench into your first year here at Bates and everything. How did you handle things, you know, during that time? It was, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, it was not a normal um, experience for a freshman because we didn't have to, we only played two games against Colby, right. uh, which was was amazing because, you know, not everybody had that chance to play games during COVID. Um, and it was just weird, the environment on campus, like staying inside, masked up all year, not a lot going on. 
and couple outbreaks on campus. It was it was hard, but we kept, you know, we kept on getting better and like practicing in groups of six and like individual practices and you know we just we fought through it and we got through it and emerged uh, even stronger obviously winning the NESCAC last year I mean take us through that ride from <laughs> your perspective to actually you know win the conference um in your first real year of college basketball right it was it was it was amazing I don't know how how I can express that feeling it was just the community involved in um, every games, and you know, it was it was amazing. I don't know how to express that feeling, but that I want to have that feeling again. You know, winning and like making the school proud. You know, in every ways. And then for you personally, these last two games, you've really got involved a lot. We talked after the Husson win, but I mean, what was it like to get that playing time and being able to make such a big impact there? Um, so I will, um, I was told myself and, um, I talked to coaches also a lot and a couple of my teammates and like, I tell myself that every time you get in, you get a chance, you just got to leave it all on the court, you know? And well, not many people get that chance to play. So it's just like the, um, not taking everything for anything for granted. So when you get that, Two minutes, three minutes, you got to give it all. If you're not scoring, it's okay. You can play defense. You can talk to your teammate. You can be that voice on the court. So, you know, just that mentality. That's what I had these past two games. Terrific. And then kind of like going from high school basketball um, with Portland to college basketball here, what were some adjustments you kind of had to make uh, once you did get into some games and realize what college basketball was like sort of, right? I mean, I think it's just like keeping that mentality of competitiveness. Um, um, I knew uh, I play all my life with my sisters, and we always have that like compete against each other. And I feel like it's just you have to adapt everywhere you go, you know. And I feel like it it's been great for me because balancing that with class work and work or campus work that's it makes you a better player and a better student because you have to focus on every single uh, thing, class, basketball, work, and you don't just, you just don't have time um, to waste. Terrific. And then um, I have to ask because, like, I imagine growing up you didn't get, get a whole lot of snow. So what's it like oh, uh, yeah. being in Maine the last few years and uh, with, with the winter and stuff? <laughs> oh yeah, that was interesting. My f- I remember my first snow experience. We played against uh, Thor- Thornton Academy, yeah. and we were playing inside, and then we went out. So like, what is this? And like, oh my god, it's snow, <laughs> and we're just throwing snowballs at each other. I'm like, oh my god, and then the f- uh, the next few days, I was like, yeah, I don't like it. It's too, <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> yeah, but it was amazing. It was an interesting uh, experience. But, Certainly, yeah. I know your younger sister is at college, right? Playing as well. Yeah, she's at Bentley. How's college. she doing over there? She's doing great. Yeah. She's doing great. She's she had a a wonderful um, freshman year. They won the conference too, mm-hmm. so she's she's doing great. Awesome. Yeah. What are your thoughts you want to share, kind of, on the season so far, and maybe uh, some keys for the Bobcats this week? I know we're talking on Tuesday afternoon. You got a game in a little over four hours, and you know we're, what's kind of kind of things the team to focus on right now i guess uh the team is focusing on being ruthless so it's one of our values and we and we got we've gotten better this past few games like that connection the team and um competitiveness and not giving up and playing the whole four um four quarters of the game so we're focusing on just showing up and playing hard and being who we are and you know that's what we're focusing on. All right, Davina Cavantu, thank you so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. The swimming and diving teams combined to score the most points among nine schools Friday and Saturday at the Maine State Meet, hosted by Colby College. Although it did not contribute to the team scoring, sophomore Sophie Cassily, senior Nate Summer, senior Edmund Jung, and junior Grace Wenger won the mixed 400-yard medley relay in a meet record time of 3 minutes, 36.50 seconds, encapsulating the team effort it took for the Bobcats to outscore rivals Colby and Bowden, not to mention all the other main schools overall. All four join the Bobcast this week.
Nate, let's start with you. I mean, this uh, event is held every year at the Maine State Meet. Uh, have you swum in it before, and what was it like this year there? Yeah, I swam it as the first year here. Um, I think I was on the B relay, and then the swam it last year with Sophie and Grace, and I think we got second or third place. And how did it go this season from your perspective? Obviously, it was really well, right? <laughs> um, yeah, we added Edmund this year, uh, and I think it went pretty well. It was a great race against the other teams, and you know, ended up winning. And Edmund, how does this you know mixed relay compare to maybe some other events you're in? Um, I usually do the hundred fly anyway, so I was uh, put into that position for the um, the mixed relay. I was on the B relay last year, so this is a great opportunity to showcase some of my swimming on that A relay, and it really paid off. Great, and then Sophie, uh, let's bring you in here. I mean, how this relay, you know, how much fun is it maybe compared to the rest of the meet, perhaps? Oh, it's super fun. Even though the relay is not scored, I think it's a great um, reason to get the whole team together and combine both the men's and the women's program. Yeah, Grace, how do you see it from your perspective? Yeah, no, same thing. And we've always come out pretty placing pretty well in this relay, so it was fun to get the record this year and have a really fast relay. And now you all have um, a train trip coming up at the end of the month, right? Uh, Edmund, tell me a little bit about the train trip and what um, the team can expect down there in Florida, right? We do a lot of long course swimming, which is great for aerobic training. But um, we're also swimming doubles, so we don't have a lot of free time to ourselves. However, we do have a lot of fun in between. We like go to the beach and go have some nice dinners. Uh, Nate, you want to add on to that? Good for team bonding, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it's great for team bonding. You know, we kind of mix up, like, the living situations down there, so we get to hang out with all the first years and the underclassmen. Um, it's just a good time going to the beach and then eating seafood and then having fun with the coaches, even though they're pushing us really hard. And, Grace, how do you see it coming up here? Yeah, it's always a really fun experience. Um, a lot of hard swimming, but kind of the memories are always the fun parts in between practices and all the bonding moments. So definitely excited. And Sophie, you got your first taste last year, right? As a first year. Yeah, last year was my first training trip and I'm super excited to go back. It was a lot of fun, even though it is really tough. When I look back to from last year, I don't think of the hard swimming. I just think of how much fun I had. Awesome. And Edmund, we haven't had you on the Bobcast before, so give me a little bit of idea about your background in terms of you know, what made base the place for you. How do you first get involved with, with swimming um, competitively in the first place, I guess? Um, so I've been swimming since I was pretty young. I was thinking about either doing swimming or basketball, but you know, this is where my path took me because I was pretty passionate about the sport and I still am, you know, coming into Bates college, I wasn't one of the faster swimmers, but like over time, as I improved, I find a responsibility to contributing to this team and to this program. Your teammates didn't know, I guess, that you were into basketball, sounds like. Oh, no, know. we know. <laughs> oh, oh, you know. <laughs> That's why we're laughing. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, is basketball something you're particularly passionate about also, or? Um, you know, I like to follow the NBA and stuff and, like, go shoot around with Nate from time to time. Great. And, Nate, how about a little bit about your background in terms of what led you to Bates here? Uh, yeah, I've just kind of been swimming my whole life. Um, my mom was a really good swimmer. She went to Olympic trials in high school, so I kind of just always been in it. And I got a email junior year of high school from Coach Vanessa, and I came out here twice to look at the school and just kind of fell in love with everything. So I'm happy to be out here swimming. Yeah, and so just, I mean, looking at the men's and the women's teams, I mean, obviously, norm, most meets are separate scoring. The Colby, I guess, the computers, they combined it this year, and obviously the Bobcats got the most points. So, so what was it like to, you know, have this particular, I guess, you know, mixed relay in general to really kind of, in, you know, encapsulate that, really, Grace? I mean, in terms of, you know, combining these teams a little bit, right? Yeah, it was a really great experience. Um, I mean, we don't get a lot of championship meets with the men's and women's team together because we have NESCAC separate, mm -hmm. and this year we have our CBB meet that's also separate. So it's definitely nice to get everyone together, get some fast swims in, and have a lot of fun on that relay. Yeah, and Sophie, in terms of, you know, for you, after such a great rookie season, what are some goals you have maybe going forward this year here? Um, I think now that I know my full potential and what bait swimming has to offer, I think it um, this year I really want to do more as a team. I want to get more people to nationals, and I really hope that um, – we can have a bigger team, and it'll just be more fun that way. And Edmund, obviously, and Nate also, getting the relays to national for the men's team, I know that's a big priority, right? Yeah, we were really close last year um, on several relays and just did not uh, materialize. But this year I think we have a really good chance with some of the first years that we brought in and then some of the improvements that we've made on the team. Edmund, what are some goals you might have here this season? Making nationals is definitely one of them. That has been kind of our overall encompassing goal. Um, as a team, though, I think we have a lot to work on towards 
like to get there, uh, this training trip is going to be the first step to doing that. You said you're butterfly, right? Yeah. And what what about that event uh, makes it your kind of like your best, <laughs> perhaps? Um, I've always been a pretty good butterfly. I came in as an IMer. Hmm. Breaststroke didn't really work out for me. And I kind of had to specialize into one thing, and it just ended up being butterfly. That's a physically demanding one, though, right? Isn't it probably the most demanding? Is that fair? Uh, I would say butterfly or brushstroke is the most demanding. Mm. But, you know, with a lot of practice, a lot of yards put in, <laughs> it's not that hard. Not that hard? All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, any other thoughts? Sir? Uh, Grace, you think it's, it's pretty hard? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> But any other thoughts anyone wanted to share about, you know, the main state meet we had this past weekend? Anything you wanted to bring up that we haven't got to talk about or anything? Yeah, I mean, we kind of brought it up already. I mm-hmm. just wanted to say, like, in the team scores, Colby was swimming pretty fast for the men and Bowden for the women. Right. But in terms of the combined team scores, I think we showed that we're the best team in Maine. And that's why we won that relay and won that meet overall. All right, there you go. That's a good way, I think, to finish up. Uh, Edmund, Nate, Grace, and Sophie, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Well, the men's basketball team struggled to a one in three week. The Bobcats get a chance to bounce back this week when they take on Bowdoin this Friday and Colby this Saturday in non-conference action on the road. Meanwhile, the women host the Mules on Tuesday and the Polar Bears on Thursday. Make sure you check out GoBatesBobcats.com for the complete schedule. And we'll catch you next time on the Bates Bobcast. Bates, 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 Bates.